Now this week's Sunday conversation is difficult, but an important one. Jean Celestine Lakin now lives in the Houston area, but she's a native of Rwanda. As a child, she narrowly escaped the genocide that claimed the lives of a million members of Rwanda's Tutsi ethnic minority. She tells her story in a new book, A Voice in the Darkness. And this morning, she talks about that darkness and overcoming it with our Owen Conflenti. How much of it can you talk about these days, the details, the, or, or is there, are there some things you just, you don't even want to go to anymore? I'm so open talking about it. And so now that it's 25 years, April marks 25 years of the genocide, and I feel like I, I have been given the opportunity to be able to really shed the light on what happened. So there's nothing that I'm uh, afraid of, you know, speaking about. I feel like people need to know uh, when I, May my husband, he didn't know. Uh, when I meet people, when I go uh, around the country, so many people have no idea that in 100 days, one million people were just killed because they were Tutsis. So I'm really open to, you know, really shedding a light on those events. Even my, the toughest uh, part to talk about is just when I watch my, uh, my father being butchered with machetes but I go through the details to really give uh, people like an idea of how horrific that experience was. How did you do it? Those times when you had your twin siblings with you, you're nine, they're three, uh, it, you probably wanted to stop running a few times. How did you get the energy, the whatever it was? There, there were times I felt like I just wanna die. I, I just wanna give up. But the minute I would look in the, uh, the three-year-old's eyes, there was something that the innocence just gave me the courage to go on. So I sort of like took myself out of the equation in that I am protecting them. I have to protect them. Whatever that I'm do doing, it's for them. They have to be alive. And uh, also, I feel like my faith uh, really played a big part in not just giving up. I felt like God was watching me through all of this chaos, all this madness, uh, and I knew there was a plan um, that he brought me through out of it somehow. How do you handle the feelings of the fear when you think back and maybe the anger? How do you deal with any feelings of vengeance? During the genocide, I was just surviving Every, for minutes, for seconds, uh, for per hour, it was just there was this sort of like, just like the survive. I was in a survival mode, uh, and then after the genocide, it really that's when I felt the PTSD. That's when I felt the trauma. That's when I felt the anger, the bitterness. I couldn't help feel those you know negative things, but then. Over the years, I just prayed and I just asked God, I just need to be who you created me to be. I need to have that sort of, the sense, the peace. And so I started working on forgiveness. I really and you know, honestly had to go inwards not to be able to commit the, the same, not to kind of buy into the same ideology that, you know, hateful ideology that those people had. I had to, to forgive them. Please tell me a little bit uh, about your foundation because I know you have a mission to help orphans back home. Yes, so we have we funded uh, one million orphans, um, and our goal is to have one million children really helped who do not have, you know, mom and dad. Uh, we have a little boy, and we give him all the love that we can give him. And seeing all these, you know, millions of children all over the world who do not have that same kind of love, uh, the one million orphans provide uh, clothing. We provide school fees for these children. We feed them. We do medical supplies as well. So when people purchase the book copy of my book, some of the proceeds we give back to the, those orphans all over the world. Wow, incredible to hear that story. And this conversation continues with Lakin's thoughts on what Rwanda is like today. You can watch the full conversation right now on our website. We've also included a link with more information about her book, A Voice in the Darkness, and her foundation, One Million Orphans. It's all on clicktohouston.com slash Sunday. We never forget about those kinds of uh, mistakes of history.